guys welcome back to another episode at kitchen chaos with jackie although you may have noticed we updated the name uh i have changed it to keto kitchen chaos with jackie and i'm jackie hi um and the reason um i did that was because um in talking to friends and family uh, they were like jackie the recipes that you're doing are very keto friendly that's really the diet or the lifestyle that you follow so you should put that in your name and i kind of struggled with that for a little bit because i didn't want to pigeonhole myself um, into just that community, um, even though most of the YouTube channels that I watch are keto related. Um, but I also wanted to, you know, appeal to diabetics. Um, since I am a type one diabetic myself, it's important to me um, to show you a different way of eating that will help your blood sugars uh, and that roller coaster ride that you get, as well as gastric bypass people. Because again, I had gastric bypass um, almost 20 years ago. So to me, it was really important that I get all of those, but I couldn't put that all into the title. So, so this is what we have, okay? All right, guys. So um, I know it's been a really rough time for everybody uh, being quarantined, uh, you know, staying at home. Like I've been out of work since the end of March and that's been really difficult, although my house is really clean. Uh, I've been doing a lot of cleaning um, and clearing out things. And so that's been nice, but it's also been a little you know, sad and I just, I really miss going to work. I miss my patients. I miss my guests. I, I just miss that interaction. So I really haven't even gone out uh, to the grocery store very much. Um, I try to go only every two weeks just to get some fresh produce. Otherwise, we have been digging through the freezer. Um, and since I'm home, I'm able to take a little bit more time with meals and not have to worry about prepping uh, things for George to be able to make while I'm at work. So in doing that, I found a bag of shrimp that I didn't know I had. I was so excited. It was like Christmas. I was like rooting through the freezer in the basement and I was like, what is that? Hey. All right. So when I found that, I knew I wanted to make another shrimp dish for you guys. Um, I have, I did a, a shrimp and grits uh, recipe. I'll go ahead and post a link to that up here for you. Uh, but tonight we are going to do another unwitch, unsandwich. I haven't really come up with a good name for those. Um, it's something I do quite a bit. I love sandwiches, but of course they don't eat the bread. So I'm always trying to figure out different ways uh, that I can have the filling. So I still get the taste and flavor of the sandwich without the carbohydrates. So we're going to do a shrimp po' boy tonight. And instead of putting it on bread, we're going to do it over a slaw salad. So it's a shrimp po' boy with a uh, creamy Cajun sauce. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that sauce and I'm actually gonna mix it with some cabbage and some other vegetables. We'll serve the shrimp over that with all the fixings that you would normally get at a po' boy. Uh, so that is, uh, we have some tomatoes, some pickles, and we'll do a little bit of onion because I like the acid of the onion. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on that. I hope you come along and enjoy the ride with me. Let's go play. All right, gang, so here we have our cast of characters for our sauce, and that's what we're gonna actually work on first, because I wanna make that and then let the flavors meld in the refrigerator. I'm also starting this a little bit early in the day, um, just so that I can get all of this prep work done. So when it comes time for dinner, all I have to do is cook the shrimp. Uh, so don't pay attention to the time uh, that's on the clock. All right, so normally um, I would make a uh, full batch of this sauce because I do like to use it for other things but um, I am not, and there's two reasons. One is it is just George and I that's eating tonight, so um, I thought, well, we'll just do a half. The other reason is because I don't have any more sugar-free ketchup. And I'm very upset, I'm very disappointed. Um, I really thought that I had a jar up in the cupboard, but when I looked, it was actually barbecue sauce. I have two jars of sugar-free barbecue sauce I don't use that much, and no sugar-free ketchup. So what we're gonna use in place of that um, is a ketchup that I bought. Uh, it was on sale. It's a jalapeno heat. Uh, it has less sugar in it than the regular uh, ketchup does. So that's what we're going to use. So again, I'm just going to use less of that uh, so that my carb count uh, will be okay. It is, I believe, three grams of carbs per two tablespoons. So I figure with as much mayonnaise as we're going to use, it'll even out probably to a carb or two per serving. All right, so <clears throat> what we have is a half a cup of mayonnaise, mayonnaise of your choice. Um, I'm gonna do a third of a cup of ketchup. We have a horseradish, so we're gonna use a couple of tablespoons of that. 
I also have uh, my Creole seasoning. And this is one that I made, and I'll post a link uh, to that video for you. It was one of the first videos I did. I do like to make my own seasonings when possible, um, just because I know that there's no added uh, sugar to them. So uh, that is one uh, that I did. So that's what we're going to be using. I'm also going to use some garlic powder, paprika, garlic powder and paprika, as well as some lemon juice. All right, so let's go ahead and get this started. So our first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add half a cup of mayonnaise to our bowl. That's gonna be our base there. Whoops, oh, it's flying around already. And then we're gonna add a third of a cup of ketchup, probably actually a little bit less. All right, I actually am gonna use um, a little bit less than a quarter of a cup of uh, ketchup again just because I don't want any added sweetness even though this one has more spicy than heat but also with that carb uh, thing I just don't want to add a whole bunch so um, I will link when I put this recipe up I will put the original measurements for you so you can see and then as always I usually play around with stuff the fact that I'm even measuring this is only for you guys because normally I just kind of add as I go so I think that is more than enough ketchup probably could have added even a little bit less um, but it is what it is okay so next we're going to go in uh, with two tablespoons of horseradish so I don't think that's going to work let me get my knife now, if you have horseradish sauce that already has mayonnaise in it, you could definitely use that. If you have uh, regular prepared horseradish, uh, that is the best, but again, it's whatever. It's, and you know, it has to do with the spiciness that you like. Um, it used to be that George did not like um, my cocktail sauce. He said it was too spicy. It came out, he didn't like the horseradish. He said I added too much horseradish. But now, thankfully, his taste buds have come along, so I can add a little bit more horseradish than I normally would. So again, it really just depends on your taste buds. Um, he's still not down with um, spicy food, though. I keep trying. He can do a little bit of jalapeno, but that's about it. He has, his palate is just not is not there ah, it's all right though i live with it <laughs> so sometimes you'll notice i won't make things as spicy uh as i would if i was making it for myself all right so two tablespoons of horseradish and that should give us a nice little bite in there now the creole seasoning that i use is not super spicy again i uh, created it that way for george uh so that he wouldn't be overly spiced out so um, if you, you know, if you use a pre-made one or if you make this one, just again, go by your taste. Nothing is raw in this, so you can taste at will. All right, and then uh, we're going to go in with our Creole seasoning, and I'm just going to do a teaspoon of this. I'm just going to sprinkle that in there. All right, now even though my Creole seasoning has these uh, spices in it, we have to do a little bit of extra, so why not? Um, I have just a quarter of a teaspoon. Again, these measurements are cut in half from my original recipe, so just bear that in mind. <clears throat> so at least, I mean, that's good, right? If you're just making it for yourselves, if you don't, you know, have the family to feed. They said the kids aren't here this weekend, so there we go. Okay, so we got that in there, and then I think the last thing that we need is um, some lemon juice. So this is going to be about a half of a tablespoon of lemon juice. So we're just going to kind of eyeball that in there. I figure you can't really have too much. I really like the acid. All right, guys, and that is our sauce. So we're just going to give that a mix. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the fridge and just let it set up. Um, and uh, we'll add that to our coleslaw mixture, which is what I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next. Okay. All right. So I'm going to get all those ingredients together uh, while you're hanging out, just waiting for me to come back. Okay. So um, I have put that in the fridge. I did taste my sauce. I think it's absolutely delicious, but it's really funny because once I got it all mixed up together and I looked over at the ketchup bottle and realized that it was the jalapeno ketchup and I was just talking about George not liking things too spicy. I was like, Oh, sugar smacks. I hope it's not too spicy. I don't think it is. I think it tastes delicious. Um, he does not trust my taste buds because when I say something's not spicy, he thinks that it is. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. I'm hoping uh, that mixed with the cabbage um, and scallions and with the shrimp and all the other good stuff that's going to go on it, that it will not be too spicy for him. 
So what I have laid out here for you guys um, is the rest of the ingredients besides the shrimp that we're going to be using um, in our unwitch. Uh, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to cut up some cabbage. Again, enough for the two of us to have for dinner tonight. Uh, if you have shredded cabbage, like the um, coleslaw mix that's in a bag, that would work great. I actually thought about getting that, but then I realized I really wanted to have cabbage for something else this week for dinner. Um, and again, I'm trying to buy my vegetables so that I have enough to last me for two weeks um, so that I don't have to go to the store very often because it's a scary prospect going to the store. It was really weird. Um, I, I don't know. I didn't like it. It stressed me out. So the least amount of times that I have to go to the store, the better. Um, the fact that, you know, everybody's gloved and masked and you got to go in one door and out the other door and down this aisle and up this aisle. And it was just very surreal. I'm sure you guys have experienced this as well. Um, it was just, it was a lot different than two weeks ago whenever I went out to the store and it just kind of, like I said, I was a little, I was a little stressed by the time I got home. So we're just going to really try not to go to the store very much until I run out of food in this house, which probably won't happen. Um, okay. So anyways, what we're going to do is I'm going to cut up some of this cabbage. Sorry, lost track. I'm also going to put some scallions in here and I just like the flavor, uh, of that. So that's not traditional. Uh, for a po' boy, although um, I have seen where you can do shredded uh, lettuce, cabbage, or even spinach on a po' boy. So we have that down. So we're going to do that. I'm going to put that in the bowl, um, and then we're going to mix some of that dressing in with it. The other thing that's going to go on our um, salad on which tonight is I'm going to dice, or I'm not going to dice, I'm going to slice up uh, just a couple of slices of onion, very, very thin. I also found some really nice uh, tomatoes at my store, so we're going to slice up some tomato and then also some dill pickle. Again, these are the, well, not the onion, these are the normal uh, fixings that you have on a po' boy. I don't know why you wouldn't put onion. I, again, I like that little bit of bite, that little bit of acid you get from the onion. Um, so that's why I'm going to use it. Uh, but whenever I assemble everything, I will cut these things up and put those over top of the salad with the shrimp. All right, I just wanted to show you guys um, how I was gonna cut the cabbage for the slaw. Um, I cut off the top part of uh, my head of cabbage after I uh, took off the bad leaves and I gave that a good wash. Um, I then cut that in half, put this over here, and then I'm just very thinly slicing the cabbage. And the reason I'm doing that is because traditionally, uh, when you have a po' boy sandwich, you have thinly sliced uh, lettuce, cabbage, or spinach. And it just makes it a nice mouthfeel. You make sure you get a bite, um, or you get some in every bite. Then it helps to counteract the lack of texture in the shrimp. So that is the also, also the other reason why I really like to use cabbage with this recipe, is I like to have that little bit of textural difference. So again, we're just going to cut that up so it's very thin and that'll make a nice little salad. And then uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to slice up a little bit of scallion. I'm not sure if I'm going to need to use this whole one or not. Um, they're pretty big. There are some really nice scallions at the store uh, this week, I have to say. So we're going to be making a couple other things and I'm going to be using scallions. Um, hopefully I'll be able to film those for you. Um, but what I'm going to do is again, I'm just going to very, if you can see what I'm doing, very thinly slice because you don't want to get a big honking piece of scallion. Now, if you do not have scallions, hey, you don't have to add them. Not a big deal. So don't buy extra stuff, especially right now. You're not supposed to be going to the store. I already told you, I don't want to go to the store. So, you know, use what you have in the house. If you have some just regular onion, I think some red onion would also be uh, very tasty. This is just kind of a mild onion flavor going into the slaw part. Um, that'll be different uh, than the little bit of white onion that I'm going to put over top of it. So that's why I just, again, I like the different flavors, I like the different textures. So I'll probably cut up a little bit more of that, but just to kind of give you an idea. Okay, so this is going to be our slaw. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll actually finish cutting this. I'm going to put this in the fridge. Closer to dinner time, I'm going to add that dressing that we made or that sauce that we made to this. I'm going to do that at the last minute so that the 
uh, cabbage will keep its crunch. To me, that's very important. Again, we're looking for texture here. Uh, so once we do that, and then like I said, uh, we're gonna slice up our tomato. We have our pickles and our onions, and then that'll go on top of that. So I'll show you the finished product once we get there. Okay, so I'm gonna finish doing this. The next time I see you, uh, we'll probably be closer to actual dinner time, and I will cook up the shrimp for you. Okay, so we're ready to get dinner started. So I've already sliced up some tomato. We have our pickles out, a little bit of uh, sliced white onion. I also have two cloves of garlic chopped up. I'm gonna add those to the butter in the pan that we're gonna cook the shrimp in. But what I wanna do first is I'm gonna make the slaw and I wanna get everything assembled in the bowl before I cook the shrimp. That way I have that ready and I'll be able to put the nice hot shrimp on there, which with the cool vegetables should be absolutely delicious. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add some of our sauce to our coleslaw mixture. So we're just gonna start with half of it because I don't want to overdress it. I figure I can put some to the side, so if we want more, we can have it. So we're just gonna kinda mix that around. And remember, this is just the cabbage with green onions that I've had sitting in the fridge. Now, I was thinking about this, um, that if you really wanted to have it as a sandwich, uh, or you know be able to pick it up with your hands one of the things you could do is put this in a lettuce leaf so if you had like maybe some romaine lettuce you could just peel off uh, the bigger leaves and then just fashion it uh, kind of the same way you just put like the slaw down and then uh, all your vegetables your tomato and onion and pickles so you could pick it up and eat it as a sandwich I'm not that particular about it um, some days I, I guess I do prefer it that way but today we're just like I said gonna do a little a little salad slaw. So um, I think that that is gonna be plenty of dressing for our slaw. Like I said, I don't want it to be super wet and we can always add more as we're eating it if we feel the need. But that looks absolutely delicious. Okay, so now if that's mixed up, we're gonna get our bowl and I'm gonna go ahead and start doing some assembly. All right, let's assembly begin. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to season my tomatoes. Um, you wanna go ahead and throw a little salt and pepper on there just to help bring out the lovely flavor. Season all your foods. All right, and then we're just gonna go in with our bowl. So we're gonna pile some slaw in here. All right. So we've got that. So what I did was I chopped everything up so that it'll be easier to eat all together. So like I said, just wanna show you. So we have a little bit of that white onion. So we're just gonna kinda toss that in here. And then we're gonna go in with our tomato. I can tell this is going to be George's because it's a little bit bigger than what I would make for myself. And then we're going to go in with our pickle. And again, these are just going to give you the flavors of the inside of the sandwich. All right, and that's all there is to that. So um, we're going to go ahead then and get the shrimp started. And uh, then we'll top that and we'll be ready to eat. Okay, so I have two tablespoons of butter melting in the pan. Um, I have a pound of shrimp that I've cleaned and deveined. They're sitting over here to the side. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add those two cloves of garlic to the butter. And we're just gonna be doing this on a very low heat. Now normally I kinda do my shrimp um, at a higher heat and pretty quickly, so about two minutes a side. But this time, because I really want them to get the flavor of the butter and the garlic, uh, we're actually gonna do them low and slow. It's still not gonna take very long. It's probably gonna only be like maybe three minutes aside, um, but it'll give it a chance to uh, pull up some of those flavors. So we're just gonna put this down. I have that on super low. All right, so I just kind of moved the garlic around a little bit and we're gonna go ahead and place our shrimp in the skillet. And we're 
just going to kind of make sure that they're all flat in the pan. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sprinkle some of that Creole seasoning on here. Make sure they got all some nice butter and garlic going. Okay. Now you can do this as light or as heavy as you want. Again, this isn't super spicy, so I kind of do it a little heavy handed because I just really like the flavor. So we're just going to get those a nice little sprinkle. And we're just going to kind of keep an eye on them. Once they start to turn um, opaque on the one side, then we'll flip them over and do the other side. And then you'll know that they're done because they'll curl up um, all the way. Their tails will curl up to their heads and a nice little closed C. And that way you know your shrimp are done. You do not want to overcook them. They come out kind of chewy and funky. We don't want that. We just want some nice, beautiful shrimp. So we're just going to, like I said, kind of keep an eye on them. Um, some of the smaller ones, of course, we're going to have to flip before the bigger ones. Um, but don't take your eye off. Okay, so it's been about a minute, and I don't know if you'll be able to see, um, but you can see how it's darker white here on the bottom, um, and then the lighter color on the top. That means it's time to flip. So we're going to go ahead. I'm looking at these smaller ones and check in. I think I'm going to go ahead and probably flip all of those small ones in there. So... Yeah, like I said, it just takes a little bit of patience with these. My biggest thing is um, just don't want to undercook them or overcook them, that is. And then also, it depends on like where the heat is on your pan, so sometimes that makes a difference too, how quickly they're getting done. And get the rest of these bad boys flipped over. We're going to let them go for probably just another minute. All right guys, so our shrimp are done and I just wanted to show you, you see how they curl up in a nice tight little circle? That's how you know they're done and you wanna make sure you take them off the heat. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these plated up, um, give it a taste for you and then we're gonna eat dinner. All right guys, we're all plated up, we're ready to eat. I just wanted to give it a taste for you. So you can see, we got everything chopped up in there. And um, I did not let that garlic and a little bit of butter that was left in the pan go to waste. I actually uh, sprinkled that over top of the shrimp. And so you get that little bit of extra flavor. So I want to get a bite of everything, get a little bit of the slaw, uh, some of the tomato and the pickle in there. And of course, a piece of shrimp. Mmm. <laughs> -hmm. That's really good. I think you guys are going to like this. Pardon me as I keep chewing. All right, so one of the things too is if you don't find a bonus bag of shrimp in your freezer and you're like curious and you kind of want to make this because you have other things in the house, make it with chicken. You can make it with regular fish. You can do it with anything that you have. This is just an idea to inspire you to maybe do something a little bit more creative or something that you didn't think of before. So guys, again, thank you for watching. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, there's that little bell icon, so you can push that, and that'll let you know whenever I upload a new video. Still trying to do those on Sundays, although sometimes that doesn't quite work out for us. We'll just see how it goes. All right, guys, be safe, be good to each other. I love you. Thank you. Peace.